Hello everyone, I am back on my YouTube channel. I haven't posted in forever, but I am currently waiting to do my Disney College program. I move in August 3rd for the Fall 2020 program, and I am going to be an attractions cast member, and I'm so excited. So while I waited, I wanted to put out some videos on some advice and like how I'm preparing to go to my program. So I assume if you're watching this right now, you are trying to apply to the program and hopefully get in. So I wanted to give you some tips and tricks from what I learned personally when I was waiting to hear back if I got in and like the whole process in general. I know there's a lot of videos out there explaining this already, but I wanted to kind of combine what I've learned from all of those into one video. So I have some notes on my computer here and I'm just going to go through them all and give you some advice. Okay, I took off my ears because I thought it was making my hair look weird. But <laughs> back to what I was saying. So, um, basically how it works is you have your application stage, then you have your web-based interview, then your phone interview, and your offer. So I'm going to go through each of those steps, explain how it worked for me. Also, just um, a disclaimer, they have changed a little bit how it works over the past few years. So if you've seen other people's videos from years ago, it might be a little bit different than what I'm saying. So I'll just tell you my most recent experience. So starting out with the application, I applied the first day it was open on January 13th. I'll insert a graphic here that shows um, when the periods of time are that you can apply and when they close off and all that jazz. Um, I applied the very first day, found out that same day. Now I would say the application period is the most important step in this whole process because I couldn't even tell you how many people I saw that were um, in that AR application receive stage and didn't find out they didn't get in until the very end. Because typically the pattern I see is if you don't find out your application got through within the first three days, you most likely didn't get in, but that's not definite, of course. So out of all of the steps, preparing for the application is the most important because this is the first look Disney's going to see of you, and it's going to basically put everything out there that they're going to ask you about in your phone interview, so it's really important you make it perfect. So to prepare for this, what I did was I watched a lot of YouTubers and I also looked at the Disney Parks vlogs where the recruiters post things. I didn't use this entirely that much. A lot of people say they really go into detail with this. Um, but I also use a lot of, if you go onto the college program like where it lists the jobs and you can see the descriptions, that's basically what they're looking for. So of course you're going to want to put that in your job experience. So for example, I have a lot of waitressing experiences which there is a hosting role. So I kind of took like what they were looking for in a host and kind of turned it into my previous work experience. So how it's set up is it used to be a responsibility and a skills section, but now it's different where it's just your responsibilities. Now people all the time argue whether or not you should do a paragraph or you should do bullet points. I personally did I think about five bullet points per job. And I made them pretty long sentences. Um, not crazy long, I would say like six to ten words maybe. So I'm just going to give an example of one so you can kind of get the vibe of what I'm talking about. So for one of my waitressing jobs, I said one of the responsibilities I had was consistently providing courteous and friendly hospitality to enhance the guest experience. Now notice I use the words enhance, friendly, hospitality, guest. They're looking for those specific Disney terms such as attraction instead of ride, like I said, gust us guests instead of customers stuff like that and they're looking for not just like the basics of what you did so you're not just gonna say I rolled silverware you're gonna say I rolled silverware in order to blah 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 like you're all most of your responsibility should just go back on to how it affected your co-workers and the guests you're working for you also want to think about general jobs so I said I was fine standing up for long periods of time because that's something you're going to have to do in Disney. I said I've had experience teaching children's theater so I talked a lot about how I'm good at engaging children in activities because children's activities is one of the roles as well as there's kids in Disney in general. So that's a good start. Also don't freak out if you don't have that much job experience. I think I have four jobs listed as well as a babysitter which I guess that's a lot. I don't know. I think the more the better so if you have had those smaller jobs like babysitter or I don't I don't know what else but if you put those on there I think they're a good idea because the more information the more Disney can learn about you the more you can put those good clean sentences on there but I would say if you have less jobs maybe include more responsibilities that you can put more detail into 
but definitely spend a lot of time on this. I couldn't tell you how many weeks I spent refreshing this and like changing it and I've had so many people look at it before I even turned it in. But basically that's the most important part of the application. So you have your list of responsibilities with each job. You say what your job was, so I would say where I worked, waitress, from this year to this year with the responsibilities. Then the next part is your role preferences. Now this is also a very important part. So this is also a thing that they've changed over the past few years. I know before you would just go through and I think say your interest of every role, but how they have it is they have at the top the four most sought out jobs, which I would say are the ones people want to do the least, but um, so those are custodial, house person, lifeguard, and quick service food and beverage. So these jobs you have a better chance of getting, but they're the ones that people don't like as much necessarily. Um, so I'm just going to tell you what I put for everything. Oh, and then afterwards they have um, a list of all these other jobs you can check off that you're interested in, and then you can put what interest you have. And if you don't check them, that's just automatic no interest. So I'm just going to tell you what I put for everything. Um, starting off the top four, I said custodial, house person, lifeguard, no interest, and quick service food and beverage. I said low interest if I had to do it, but I felt pretty confident in my application already that I could get one of my more high up roles. So I also had um, attractions, high interest, which is what I ended up getting, um, boutique hostess or pirate league, high, character attendant, high, character performer, high. Children's activities, moderate. Merchandise, moderate. Photo pass, high. Cedar, high. Skyliner, gondola, low. And vacation planner, low. Now keep in mind, I have seen a lot of people put low interest for things and they still get them. So if you have no interest in doing custodial, let's say, do not put it at all. Say no interest. Because I, I know a lot of people who got custodial and they all put low interest. So be careful with that. <laughs> Um, that's pretty much it for the application, the main chunks. I know I went through that pretty quickly, but the only other thing they ask is just like generic, like military ethnicity questions that you would ask on every resume. And then you have the option at the end to attach resume, which I, is after you submit the application, which I did not see until my application got accepted because I think I got, my application went through maybe two, three minutes after I submitted it. It was very fast, which also gave me so much nerves. So if you see that and you want to put it on before you realize like me and you're just dumb, then do that for sure because I kind of wish I would have so that way they could have seen more what I do in school and stuff like that, but it clearly didn't matter for me since I still got in. So then immediately after you find out if you got um, either your application was received and you're waiting or you find out that you moved on to the web-based interview and how that works is Disney has this dashboard system that has this little line graph at the bottom and it kind of flows you through each step so it'll tell you which part of the process you're at um, since I found out right away it just kind of came up on my screen but if you're waiting to find out you'll find out through email that's also how you get your offers through your email address okay moving on to the WBI which to me was very scary um, I recommend having some people with you. I had my best friend on FaceTime and my roommate next to me while I was taking it so I could get some second opinions, which was super helpful. But it's also on a timer, which was so stressful because some of the answers were very similar to each other and you have to pick them really quickly. And at least for me on my computer screen, it didn't have the timer at the top. It tells you how long you have, but it was very stressful. I think two or three of the um, questions I timed out on, so I was like, well, great, I'm done now. I'm not going to get in, but that didn't happen to me, so thank God. But most of the questions on the WBI are going to be situational, and you just say if it relates to you or not, or yes or no kind of things. So, for example, this is the one everyone uses, but it would be like, I am always late to work. Obviously, you don't want to tell Disney you're late to work. That's a pretty easy one. So you want to be honest, of course, but you also want to kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, thinly lie just to work with Disney a little bit. But the main tip I can give you for this is they are looking for people that are consistent in their answers. This is really confusing because there's a lot of questions. I think it took me 45 minutes to do, I don't know. But they will ask you questions throughout that are kind of similar to each other, but there's so many questions in between that you're not gonna remember exactly what you said before. So one of the main things I saw throughout it is they'll ask you kind of more if you're a leader or you work well with people. 
I still to this day don't really know what's better, but I think either one that you pick is good as long as you stick through it. So they'll ask you a question about work and like how you work with other people or if someone asks you a question if you're willing to help them or if you go to your authorities like those types of questions throughout it so whatever you say the first time you need to stick with that same thing i kept on saying throughout my thing was that i'm a very hard worker and i like to be busy because some one of the options was you like to like have your three time and stuff you like to be relaxed and that was you need to keep that consistent i said that i'm a high a hard worker and I don't like having downtime, I like picking up extra hours and such, which is like, true, but, um, <laughs> so I just kept that throughout, so I think I was good there. That's pretty much it for that, I think it's broken up into four sections, I want to say, all similar types of questions, um, and then the last section is the easiest one, it's super fast, it's just like, what are you most excited for for your program, stuff like that, should say too, these are all multiple choice questions, like, like I said, super quick with a timer. And then you find out if you get your phone interview right away, which I was not prepared for. <laughs> I was so nervous because you just clicked to go to the next question. Do, 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 do. I just clicked and it was on the screen, phone interview. I freaked out. But one thing that has changed from the program now, from the past, is you have to wait to schedule your phone interview. What I've seen in other people's videos is that you get to schedule it right away, which is what I was expecting. That's why some people, you hear it only took them a week or two through the whole process, but for me it took longer just because I had to wait to schedule mine. I saw a few people that didn't have to wait, but I think the majority of us had to wait. So I don't remember the exact dates, but I'm pretty sure, I know I had my phone interview on January 29th. I'm pretty sure I got the confirmation to schedule that about a week before then. Like I said, I probably did my WBI in January 13th or 14th. So I had to wait like a week or two until I could actually schedule it and then I had to wait another week, which I'm kind of glad because that gave me a lot of time to prepare for the phone interview. Okay, so then the final step is the phone interview, which I was really scared. <laughs> So basically you pick a time and they tell you to be ready about 15 minutes before or after that exact time. Pretty sure my time was 7 p.m. I think. Um, so I wanted to make sure I was done my classes for the day. I had nothing else to worry about and I had time to mentally prepare. But when I tell you my interview was 30 minutes late, oh my gosh, which is fine. Understandable. There's a lot of people. But I was like so nervous. I literally was doing the breathe app on my Apple Watch just like hyperventilating. But let me tell you how I prepared. So the best advice I can give to you is look at people's Quizlets. There are so many phone interview Quizlets and they will have general questions, they, not even general, they all have the most specific questions. They have hundreds and hundreds of questions that they could ask you in an interview. Now the odds of you getting every single one of those questions, not high. I wouldn't actually take the time to like write about them, but at least like read the example questions so you can have some time to think about them. So this is how it's split up pretty much between any interview and then I'll tell you how specifically with me. Um, pretty much it's split up into four different sections. The first being Disney look and your roommates. So these questions are the easiest ones, most generic questions. They're going to ask if you have any tattoos or piercings. They're going to ask, um, they might ask where you go to school, what your major is, um, if you've ever lived with people and then they'll start getting into more questions. They'll ask you um, if you've ever had any roommate experiences, which like bad experiences that you had to fix, which I was really prepared to answer, but they didn't actually ask me that, but I've seen like everyone else get asked that. Then they'll go into more your job experience, which pretty much you're going to want to read, like not read, don't do that. Um, don't read what your application says, but you're kind of talking about that. So they would say, oh, so I see you worked at this restaurant. Can you tell me about that? And you're just going to kind of explain what you put as your responsibilities on your application, but in your own words. So next is going to be more role related questions. So I think how most people's is, and like this is how mine was too, she'll or he will say, so I see you put blank as high interest and they'll ask you three or four questions and they'll say the next one. So I see you put this as moderate interest, blah, 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 blah. I got asked pretty much all of my high interest roles. I got asked questions about those. Um, then after that, they're going to ask if you have any additional questions and that's pretty much your phone interview. I think mine took at most 30 minutes. I don't think it was that long. It was weird that I got asked to do attractions off of the question she asked. So 
I got asked a lot about photo pass which was honestly my number one role which I, I would have taken literally anything except for custodial so I was happy <laughs> just to work in the parks is really cool but um, I got asked so much about photo pass she even set up a situation for me she was like let's say you're at photo pass and magic kingdom like your dream blah 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 I think I even said photo pass is my number one role um, and I like explained why and stuff but um yeah, so don't expect to get the role you get asked the most about. I got asked a lot about merchandise, too, because I have experience working on cash registers from working in a restaurant, but I ended up getting attractions, which I think I got asked maybe one or two questions. So I think they do a lot based off of your personality. I honestly do not know. I also got asked some questions that I haven't heard about from other people's videos, such as if I feel comfortable moving around in wheelchairs, or I got asked if, what do I do if someone doesn't want to take their picture in like a group picture? Weird questions. Um, also, do not get upset if your recruiter is not as bright and sunshiny as others. <laughs> because personally, through my experience, um, I listened to a lot of people's phone interviews through their YouTube videos, and they had these bright sunshiny Disney people that were super excited to talk to you. They gave experiences from their own life. One of my friends who interviewed with Disney, the interviewer talked a lot about herself rather than even just it. It was more conversational. My interview was full of questions because it was not conversational at all. Because I know I gave very long and good answers and it would be like, why do you want to work for Disney? And I would say, I want to work for Disney, blah, 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 blah. And she would say, okay, do you have any tattoos? Now, okay, and the next question, okay, 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 and that really freaked me out. That really, um, <laughs> that really set my enthusiasm to a low. And like I said, the end is just additional questions, so I asked my recruiter something about um, being a character performer, and then I asked, like, what her Disney experience was, and then she was able to chip her up a little bit, so that made me feel slightly better. But yeah, that was it, and then it was just the waiting period. Oh, also I should note, um, everyone talks about having notes and stuff. I've seen other videos where people have sticky notes all around them. I just had a lined piece of paper that had my rolls on it, and I had some questions to like guide me on there. Honestly, I was so <laughs> nervous. I didn't look at my sheet of paper ever once. I think having the rolls listed was a good idea because I didn't really remember at the top of my head which ones I put high, moderate. So definitely have that in front of you. I also wrote down the recruiter's name on my papers that way I could use her name when I was talking to her. Um, that's about all the advice I have for that. Just literally watch other people's stuff, use their quizlets, practice the questions in your head, and as long as you give good solid answers that don't sound too scripted either, you'll be solid. So finally is waiting for your offer. So this was a very stressful time for me. Um, I think I interviewed on a Thursday. I interviewed January 29th and I found out February 4th, which is a Tuesday. So only a few days, which I think was normal. Most people found out a few days or a week after. And I was very nervous because most people find out on a Monday or a Tuesday. That's when the wave is in. Um, biggest tip I can give on this entire video. So my camera just died, so I'm just going to finish up this video on my phone. Um, I don't remember where it cut off. So it cut off on the part when I was literally saying this is the most important part of the video. So I'm here to tell you. Um, so the most important thing to take from this is join the Facebook groups, or group if there's just one, mine had two, or, and follow Recruiter Christy. Now you want to join the Facebook groups because everyone's going to be posting when they get accepted, what stage they're on, so you can kind of keep track of when other people are, so you can hope to be in that same grouping. Um, also, Recruiter Christy is like the head recruiter, so she's going to tweet out what days waves happen. I think I said this in the video. They normally happen Mondays and Tuesdays, but from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. And she'll normally say, like, a wave's about to go out today. Like, keep your eyes open for that. And um, people in the group will also, like, post her tweets or other recruiters' tweets so you can kind of see where everyone else is at and, like, where you'll fall into. So it's good to keep up with those things. Um, because, like I said, I got accepted on a... T or I got my offer on a Tuesday and I had my interview on a Thursday, and I was really hoping I was going to find out that Monday, because like I said, waves happen on Mondays and Tuesdays, but I didn't find out until that Tuesday, but it was still really exciting. I was in the middle of class, and I left to go to the bathroom and call my friends and cry, because I was so excited. But yeah, back to my conclusion. But <laughs> good luck if you're trying to apply. Um, as long as you're confident in yourself, you got this. You're going to kill it. 
and please let me know if you have any questions i know when i was applying i had so many questions so i would love reading if you have any and make sure to follow me on instagram where i'll be posting all about my disney journey um and yeah keep up with my channel i'll be posting vlogs soon when i'm in florida crazy <laughs> um yeah see you later bye so this is life.